Lock your doors. Bolt your windows. There's something in the fog. Here's your look at the NECA toys. The Fog. Retro Cloth. Captain Blake. Don't break, don't break, don't break. Oh. Almost. Didn't even cut myself either. In the 19th century, the wealthy Blake set sail for Antonio Bay with a crew of fellow lepers, seeking only a place where they could live in peace. But the locals who once welcomed them grew greedy, and under cover of a blinding fog, lured the arriving ship onto deadly rocks and used Blake's gold to build their own town. Exactly 100 years later, the residents of Antonio Bay have forgotten all about the town's murderous past, but Blake and his crews haven't, and this time, when the fog rolls in, they will finally have their revenge. Now, before we get a closer look at Retro Cloth Captain Blake, let's grab the old ruler, or tape measure in this case, and figure out how tall the figure stands. Now, these Retro Cloth figures, of course, are going to be a little bit taller than your standard fair neck of figures. And Captain Blake here is about seven and a half inches in height, and we're going to spin that around, which works out to be a figure that's about 19 centimeters tall. For those long-time viewers here to this channel, thank you for that, by the way. I appreciate that. We'll probably know that I never got the chance to review the first time Captain Blake, who I believe was a Shout slash Scream Factory collaboration with NECA Toys. I never got the chance to pick this up. Although this one now is retail release, and in fact I did actually find this one over on Entertainment Earth's website, immediately picked it up having not owned the other one. Now I'll put the link of course down below in the video description if you guys are interested and would like to pick up one for yourself. For some size comparisons, being that I don't have that original Captain Blake, I do have one thing better to that, or next thing at least better to that, is I do have the re the Toonie Terrors version of Captain Blake. A little bit smaller in stature, yes, the Toonie Terrors version of Captain Blake goes only to about the elbow area of the new retro cloth release. And of course, he's got more tunier looking colors, where he's got the more brighter violet purples in the Toony Terror release. Captain Blake kind of keeps the more darker colors, especially the coloring of his darker gray skin. Yes, but as for the accessories, Captain Blake comes included with a scabbard or holster for his sword. Speaking of swords, he also does come included with a saber sword. Nicely detailed, also I might say, let's just put that down here for a second, a nicely detailed looking sword. I like the way they've brushed on some additional rusting, so it does look like the saber sword is quite old. Uh, this can fit into his hand, only one of his hands, or again, it can also sit inside comfortably, the scabbard. It's easily, quite easily able to be removed, and there's a peg point right, right here on the end of the scabbard. Just quickly want to show you the detail work on just the scabbard alone. Very, very cool looking. Now this can actually clip on. I'm just going to move his arm out of the way. Excuse me here for a second, Captain Blake. On the back here, it doesn't have to necessarily be on the back. You can, in fact, move it around if you want to. There's a little hole right here that you take then the scabbard and you plug this into place. Now, this did not work the first time that I did this. I ended up having to widen the hole a little bit. Just sort of take the peg from the scabbard and... You don't have to necessarily make that noise, mind you. And just sort of twist it until finally it broadens that hole and then the scabbard is going to fit perfectly in place then from there you can go ahead draw the sword out and then the sword is going to fit into his hand again only one of his hands uh, the fingers are placed in such the way that it actually fits well around the handle section of the sword and there you can have the captain blake of course display the other hand is only more just for cursing hands than anything else he can look at you and warn you that the fog is coming in and claiming six lives the other really neat thing about Captain Blake here, as advertised on the back of the package, I'm just going to, excuse me for a second, just remove this sword. I just don't want to break the guard. I'm going to put that to the side. I'm going to kind of keep the scabbard in place for the time being. Captain Blake also does have a battery compartment, as this figure does also feature light-up eyes. The batteries, luckily, are again already installed, so if you flip it around to the back, it is a bit out of place to see a hole on the back of Captain Blake's head. A little slot. There was a plastic in there obstructing the flow of the power from the batteries just to prevent the batteries from not turning on and there's the screw compartment to unscrew this if you want to gain access to the batteries at any given point 
Now the switch I found is a little hard to gain access to. You can't just take your finger and run against it and trigger the on and off switch. In fact, it was a little harder to gain access to. That's what I ended up just doing was I grabbed nail clippers. I assure you the nail clippers are clean. And I just took the little hook end of it and I flipped the switch over. I do wish that they could have put maybe a button here as opposed to a switch. I guess maybe they did do that so that you wouldn't accidentally trip the lights and drain the batteries in the process. But to show you what it does certainly look like, I'm going to go ahead and flip the switch over. And you can see there's Captain Blake's eyes lit up. Again, switching it off. And just to see what it looks like, switching then the lights on. And you can see the glowing red lights peering through the sockets of his eye holes coming right at you. I think that's so very cool. The neat thing about it, at least, is when you are having the lights on, although I'm not going to have them on for a very long period of time, because, of course, it's going to be just draining those bat button cell batteries. It does give you a very bright, menacing look on Captain Blake's face. What I was going to say, though, is the good thing, at least, about it is if you turn off the lights, it doesn't look like he's got these barren sockets for eyeballs. In fact, with the light hitting it just the right way, it looks like they're still illuminated. Let me just double check and yeah, just making sure I didn't have them on just partially. They are still slightly illuminated. One of the benefits of them using red plastic. So even if you don't have the lights on all the time, because I certainly would understand why you would just be draining the batteries lickety split. At least it does look like his eyes are still slightly glowing. It doesn't just look like sockets, big holes, big caverns, which is sometimes the case when you get these light up eyes. When you have the lights off, for example, they just look like dead eyes, which I guess wouldn't be that far removed when looking at a character like Captain Blake. Head sculpt wise is really good. Having not owned the original Captain Blake, as mentioned already, I think it is the exact same head sculpt. I don't think, in fact, they've changed anything at all between this figure and the one that we got before. Uh, I do wish in some ways that the mouth could open and close. Now, the thing about that, though, is, of course, it would break up all the nice sculpting that they did, especially this side of his face, where you can see the whole side of his face is just eroded away with age. Such a great-looking head sculpt. I even like these little uh, kind of lightning bolts, these veins of darker purple that kind of run through the otherwise gray face of Captain Blake. It really helps to kind of illuminate his face, so it's not just all dark gray that you're looking at. As for the rest of his body, of course, he does have his pirate fatigues on. He has sort of a jacket cloak that goes over top of his pirate shirt. I wonder if he actually has puffy sleeves. I guess it'd be hard to tell, being the fact that these sleeves are already ripped and torn. One nice thing about it, though, is if you pull away the sleeves, you can actually see that he has bandages wrapped around his arms. So there are some nice little layers of texturing even underneath the fabric itself. Uh, dark colors, of course, get used primarily on this figure. Of course, he does have the lighter colors of his shirt. But like his jacket-wise, it's kind of more of a dark grayish purple. Almost about the same coloring as I'm using for right now for my backdrop. He does have the strap, of course, we've already looked at. That houses, of course, the scabbard onto the side. And then he's got a corresponding belt that matches about the same sort of coloring. That dark gunmetal gray with a little light bit, bit of lighter blue. What actually does have that same similar type of blue onto his sleeve as well. His jacket is pretty dirtied up. And I'm glad to see that they did do that. I wouldn't want them to approach this figure and give him a clean looking jacket. He would have to have a really d dirty, scuffy looking suit. And I'm glad they kept, they kind of kept to a really dingy looking color scheme. Uh, of course, as you can see on the bottom of his jacket is all ripped, torn and tattered. All these little rips and holes and stuff all over his outfit really lends to the idea that this character has been soaring the seven, sailing the seven seas for all these 100 years. Nice detailing also done on his hands as well, that carryover of that purple veinage you can see all across his hands and a little bit also onto his forearms there as well. And we get a little bit lower down on his legs, and even though he is still using the retro cloth clothing, at least they did again like the jacket, add some nice rips, tears, and just tattered sections to it so it does look like it's old. Now the thing about this figure though is this goes back to the days that the Neko retro cloth figures still only had hinges in their feet. Being that the figure is essentially just a re-release on the one that we got before as an exclusive to Scream Factory, unfortunately it still retains the same problematic joints in his ankles. We're going to talk more about that in a second, but I do wish that they could have incorporated that tilt, because like the figures that come before him, when they are using only, only single hinges like this, the feet never still, still seem to sit leveled. Always one seems to be a little more on an angle, and it causes a little bit of problem when you get in the figure to try to stand properly.
For the articulation on Captain Blake, we're going to start again with his head sculpt. It does rotate all the way around. It is, on a course, on a ball joint, minus, of course, the fact he has the longer hair. It's going to butt up against the sides of his shoulders. Head does look up. The head does, yes, look down and also can rock and back and forth as well. Uh, the shoulders, the arms, I should say, do come out. Um, you can bring them out on both the sides. I think I did actually knock the scabbard off in the process. We'll have to go back and retrieve that. Arms rotate all the way around, but of course, you're going to be tightening up the fabric around his shoulders. He only has a single hinge in his elbow, just a single hinge. Hands rotate all the way around. There's a hinge back and forth on that. The figure does have no upper torso ball joint, at least that I can see. It seems like he does have a swivel in his waist, at least. Legs split out. Not too far of a splits, mind you, but that's more than enough. Legs go forward, the legs go back. There's a nice swivel on the top cut of the thigh, only possessing a single hinge on the knee. And then again, when we get to the boots, there's just a mild swivel here, more so, I think, from the way that the boots were assembled. And then there's only this. Sadly, only this when it comes to his ankle articulation. He doesn't have an ankle rocker or anything like that, so the figure is a little bit more limited when it comes to his articulation. Still, though, a nice-looking figure. And I'm really glad to see that they did finally re-release this guy to retail. Because the only other Captain Blake that I had was the one, of course, from the Toonie Terrors line. It's still one of my favorite of the Toonie Terrors. Captain Blake, as again mentioned, was already an exclusive to Scream Factory. It's one of those cases that if you did miss your chance to get the guy the first time around, you're, you're sort of S.O.L. At least now, they've re-released this guy to retail. And again, I did pick this one up over on Entertainment Earth's website. I do like the way that this figure also does possess the light-up eyes. Not something of which is the easiest thing to gain access to. Still wish that the figure could have had a button or something on the back of his head, rather than instead a switch that you can't even get access to with your fingers. But they did probably put that in there for a reason, so you didn't accidentally trip the eyes and have them drain the batteries in the process. Usually, I'm pretty good when jumping on board those pre-orders of Scream Factory NECA toy collaborations. It usually involves Scream Factory re-releasing a movie that they already have as part of their inventory, but it usually gets a deluxe treatment, like whether it be a steel case or a brand new slip cover release. And along with that, they usually package along with it a NECA retro cloth figure. And as I've said, for most of the time, I've been pretty good for getting on those pre-orders at the time that they launched. There are a few of them that I did admittingly miss out on, like Captain Blake here. And I could maybe just chalk it up to the fact that I didn't have the money available at the time that his pre-order was available. And sure enough, when the money was there, pre-order was sold out. Or Captain Blake, at least, was sold out. Missed my chance. My chance at least came about again, being the fact that this figure now has been given a retail release treatment. It looks to me, at least from what I can see, the same figure that we got before. So you're not getting anything different necessarily, not a brand new head sculpt or anything like that, like the case that we got before of the Scream Factory or retail release Chucky's that had completely different head sculpts. Captain Blake from head to toe seems to be the same one that we got before, included with the exact same accessories we got before. So maybe the ones that had the chance and got the lucky opportunity to pick up Captain Blake when the pre-order was first around with Scream Factory probably doesn't necessarily need to now get this figure because from what I can see, it seems to be the exact same figure yet again. This figure certainly benefits for those, the collectors out there that did miss their chance on the pre-order with Scream Factory, kicked themselves like I kicked myself for not getting this guy when he was first available, now finally can reap the benefits of this guy getting a retail space treatment. Again, I did pick this one up over on Entertainment Earth's website. Uh, again, I usually go to their website and check quickly the off-the-truck option to see what they currently just had popping literally off their truck and into their inventory. And Captain Blake was, I think, right on the first page. Immediately jumped on the chance to get it, and I think they delivered it in about a week's time. Super, super fast. Again, I'll provide the link down below to Entertainment Earth's website. If you guys are interested and would like to pick this one up for yourself, don't miss your chance. Certainly don't wait another hundred years for this guy to surface, because this is a great looking figure, especially with the light up eyes. If you did pick up Captain Blake, let me know down below in the comments section what you guys think of him, or just really based on this review and this review alone. For your video question for today... Uh, of course, the remake of Fog is infamous as being one of the worst horror remakes out there. What is one of the worst horror remakes that you can think of? doesn't have to necessarily be The Fog. Let me know down below in the comments section. And if you are new to this channel, you're enjoying the content that you're seeing, make sure you hit the subscribe button down below that you're also as well turning on the bell notification and that you're also as well coming back regularly because while we have wrapped up the review for Retro Cloth Captain Blake, there will be definitely more neck reviews lined up and coming your way.
As always, thanks for watching. See you guys next time.